Hello, I'm Jill from ingvid.com, and here we are in London on a rainy day, and we're going to be looking at the English alphabet. And I have for you an alphabet memory trick to help you remember, okay? Because every alphabet in every language is different. So the English alphabet with 26 letters is, sorry, that's probably too high. So I'm going to put that down here, 26 letters is different from other alphabets and the letters come in a certain order. So some people start, okay, A, B, C, D, E. Um, so this is to help you remember the, the, all of the letters in the correct order. Okay, so it's like a little poem or story. And the first word, the first letter of each word is the letter of the alphabet. So let's just look at the first line, okay? So we have all boys can do exercise, okay? So that's A, B, C, D, E, the first five letters of the alphabet, okay? So it, because it means something in a sentence, hopefully it's easier to remember. So A, B, C, D, E, all boys can do Exercise. Exercise meaning this sort of thing, okay? Exercise. Right, okay. Second line, continuing. French girls help in June. Okay, so French girls help in June, the month of June. Okay, I always think of um, French au pairs here. I don't know if you know that word, au pair. It's French itself, but it means usually a young woman who comes from another country to live with a family and help them with the housework, um, help them with the children, the shopping, and they're called an au pair. So. This always reminds me of French au pairs, so maybe that will help you to remember as well. So, French girls help in June, and that's in the summer when maybe more French girls will want to come because the weather isn't that bad in the summer. <laughs> okay, so we've had A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, okay? And then, finally, because the alphabet is 26 letters long, it, it helps to divide it into two and stop halfway with third. So it's 13 plus 13. And that's how I learned the alphabet when I was a very little girl at school. So I always stopped halfway and knew I was halfway. So we're going to do the same here. Okay, so next one, K, L, M. Okay, kids like milk. Now, if you don't know the word kids, it's an informal, casual word for children. Okay, so children like milk, but it's kids. Um, a kid is also a baby goat. Maybe that's why children are called kids. I don't know. Don't quote me. Um, a kid is a baby goat, which is an animal, okay, that you find on a farm. Baby goat is a kid, but here it means children. Kids like milk. Um, you can also remember this line because it's K L M, and I hope we're allowed to advertise. Um, 
you may know of the airline, I think it's the Dutch airline, KLM. Um, that's another way of remembering this line. If you can't remember about kids liking milk, think of the Dutch airline, KLM, okay? So then here we are halfway through the alphabet. So we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. Halfway, right? Okay, ready to go on? Right, um, next line. This sounds strange, but it sort of makes sense. So we have now our professor, our teacher, our professor, quits reading. Okay, quits means stops. It's another informal word. It means stops. Okay, so, and the professor, that's usually someone in a, a university. So it sounds pretty strange that a professor would stop reading because that is what professors are supposed to do. But maybe this professor is retiring or they've got very tired or they need a holiday and they think, right, no more books. So now our professor quits reading. Okay, so N-O-P-Q-R. Okay. Now the next bit is totally unconnected. It doesn't really follow in the story, but I'll explain what this means if you're not sure. Socks turn up. Socks, what you wear on your feet, okay, your socks. Um, sometimes you lose your socks. Um, you think, where are my lovely red socks? I can't find them. And you go for about a week or two weeks and you're still thinking, oh, what happened to my socks? And then suddenly, one day, you go into the kitchen, maybe, you open the kitchen cupboard and there are your socks. And you say, ah, oh, my socks turned up. It usually means if something turns up, this is a verb with a preposition or a phrasal, phrasal verb, Okay, phrasal verb. It's slightly an in, informal kind of phrase again, but to turn up, it's usually if you have lost something, you lost your socks, and then you find them again. So you lose them, you lose your socks, lose your socks, and then you find them. So, ah, oh, my socks turned up. So that's the meaning of this. Socks turn up, okay? S-T-U, right? So we've got N-O-P-Q-R, S-T-U, and then to end with, now the last few letters of the English alphabet are quite difficult. Um, some other languages don't have a W, for example, um, which makes it difficult. Um, but anyway, some more advertising. V, W, okay? V, W, you may know the German car, the V, W, or Volkswagen is the full name, Volks. Wagen. So there's the V and there's the W, but no English person finds the word Volkswagen easy to say and it takes such a long time. We say VW, okay. Um, my Russia, uh, uh, I have a Russian student who I told her about this and she said, oh, well, in Russia we say Volkswagen. So, okay. <laughs> But in England, in the UK, we usually say VW, it's easier. So VW, car. 
And then the word, the letter X is very, very difficult to use in English at the beginning of a word. There are not many words, if you look in the dictionary, beginning with an X. So to find something that actually made sense, I had to use a word with X as the second letter. But never mind, it's okay. So VWX, it's meaning goes out, the exit is the way out, so it goes out of York, that is a city in the north of England, York, zoo, the zoo where the wild animals are kept. Now I don't know if there is a zoo in York, but it doesn't really matter if it helps us Remember, the last few letters of the English language, then that's all that matters. Okay, so VW exits York Zoo. VWXYZ. Okay, so just to go over this second half of the alphabet N O P Q R S T U. V, W, X, Y, Z. Okay, so that is the English alphabet. I hope you found that useful and helpful and help to help you memorize it. So please go to the website ingvid.com where there is a quiz on this topic to help you to test to see how much you've learned from this lesson, okay? And if you've enjoyed this lesson, uh, please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. And uh, so that's all for now. I hope to see you again next time. Bye!